Welcome to the Mindset Makeover. During this unique show, hosts Lisa Berry and Michelle Carter accompany you on a journey of mindful thinking, true feeling, and clearing mind chatter, all to align you with deep answers and multiple possibilities that help you move forward and live in the now. You become present, clear, and unstuck, and able to live fully led by your heart. Michelle and Lisa invite you to listen and feel this transformation through vibration of word, sound, and song. Open up to what's possible and experience a shift. Call. 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 Hello, Call. hello. Call. Welcome to the Mindset Makeover. Call. What's possible, the show that shifts. I'm Lisa Berry. Hello, and I'm Michelle Carter. Hi, Michelle. Well, guess what? <laughs> Something that really shifts our lives and is certainly unplanned are detours. And detours come last oh, minute, yeah. unexpected. Yeah. Yes, all those good, fun <laughs> things that we go, no, but they do come last minute. You're like, this so isn't planned. Uh, no, and they come inconvenient, and generally, they are not welcomed. But detours always have a gift along the way if we look, listen, and stay present. And today, we have our very first guest ever who is going to share with us some of the detours he's encountered, not and that when they've happened, they've not only brought magic into his life, but how those detours have sprinkled magic on the world by people viewing and witnessing a suspended but not captured moment in time in his art. We will welcome Mike Solomon to the show after the commercial break, but in the meantime, Michelle, detours. Ah! Yay! Oh, no, not yay. <laughs> yay, detour. <laughs> okay, not awesome. yay, but yay, yay that we're talking about detours because actually detours are, um, you know, they happen. They happen every day. I lately, I mean, I think Lisa and I can totally agree. We've been sort of living in one, but, um, you know, it, it happens. So I'm saying yay because it's exciting to see possibility in what's seemingly negative. Yes. Yeah, and how we can, you know, what I, I come to us thinking about detours and how at first you might be driving like, like everybody will think of a detour, maybe you go driving and think, well, okay. if we if we face a detour with resistance and rejection, we don't have that resilience that we could otherwise get through. And I love, it's funny that you've been, I was like, oh God, living in a detour, that just sounds heavy, but so much possibility. And I love that you said that there is possibility it, coming up to a detour, in a detour, along the path of a detour. Yes, and absolutely. I mean, the thing is that they well, they really are unexpected and inconvenient. I think those are the things I was like, oh, you know what? Like you see the word detour and you think, oh my gosh, where am I? Go-? What the first question is? Okay, what do I do? Somebody give me direction. Me give me direction. Somebody else give me direction. Where's the signs that say go here instead of here? Yes, exactly. I mean, that's we don't always have those. We don't always have those directions, so. Right, so we have to have that confidence to be able to go, okay, if I, I think if we, um, the things that I think about, I go, watch your judgment, because the judgment of a detour could certainly bring that resistance, and the the resistance and rejection, and the resistance and rejection can sound something like, I am not doing this. There's no way I'm going that way. (laughs) It's not possible Mm -hmm. to go that way. There's like water here. There's no bridge or, you know, whatever the thing may be. But it's the, and or the worst thing is we really, really use our judgment and reject it. Um, And we say, why does this always happen to me? Why can't I go this way? I plan to go this way. I'm prepared to go this way. (laughs) Well, a big thing too, sometimes you're just, you know, you're walking along, you're doing, I mean, this all. We've talked about me falling, so this has happened to me. But you're walking along, everything's fine, and then you're like, all of a sudden, yeah, you didn't see a bridge, you didn't see anything, but you're in the water. You're like, what? How did this happen? And I think that's exactly, like, not saying living in the detour in a bad way, but it's just sometimes it, where I think that maybe that's where that whole uh, sink or swim comes from. It's like, okay, well, ah. and it's hard, it's hard not to think when you're thrown in the deep end when you're like okay it's I actually Mike and I were just talking about this yesterday and we will talk when he comes joins our show uh about this but we were talking about how um how sometimes like something happens and you're like I never thought I'd be here again but then Uh when you look at the hole you're not there again 
but more than that, more than that, I think you're realizing that you're not there again. If you look at the right. other things, you're not there. Like you may be, you know, That's your bank account may be back where it was. It might be something else, but there's all these other situations that aren't there. There's all these other situations that you're never repeating. You're really, even if there's similar patterns, you're never where you were at one point. You're, yeah. You are, we are all constantly evolving no matter how bad it feels, you know. I love that you use the word evolving because evolution is an absolute, you know, without detours, like we can really be um, grateful for some detours because along the way, that's how we evolve. And whether people right now are experiencing a detour in their, um, maybe they've gone to school all their, not all their lives, sorry, they've gone to school for a long time and now they're choosing something different or they're, they were in a job or a career and now they're not, or a relationship and they've dedicated now, maybe perhaps there is a separation, a divorce or a, a passed away loved one. I mean, and financial too, like there's so many things in our lives that aren't just like, okay, a roadblock or a detour. There are so many things that really help us evolve through. It's it's kind of like a gift. Oh, oh, and at the same time, because I want to think of this with Mike coming up, because he is a, a fabulous um, gifter. He gifts things to people. And the way we can give people is serving. Sometimes we ourselves are detours for other people. And we are serving the other person in a way to allow them to grow, whether it's a karmic opportunity or a contract that we have on a soul level. So detours can be really not just like, oh, life stinks. Why did this happen? It can be a gift that we give to other people and that they give to us. And I think that can be expressed in music and art as well, which Mike's got some cool stories for that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the thing is, we're all living, you know, when you see, when you look at somebody and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, everything just worked out for them. They just made it. You know, no one really gets a free pass. It doesn't, not, none of us do. If we've chosen to come down to this planet, we're not, we have, we came down to experience all different things and, you know, different souls are experiencing different things, their time here. And, but no one gets out. I love the whole thing. We're not going to get out of this alive, but, um, <laughs> but no one gets out without, well, we might, we might ascend. Well, but that's a whole other show. But, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when just thinking about how we all have challenges and you know how you see someone that may have had the great job and the great house and all these things that are all these markers of like human success, but you yeah. never know their company could, their company could collapse. And the next thing you know, even though they thought that, that whole idea of like, what's your five year plan and all that, we can make the best plans, but we just, we just don't know how that's going to happen. Like we, it's like, it's like putting, like we've said in the past, like it's like putting it out there to the universe. Like you think you want these things, but sometimes the way that is manifested is so much better than you thought. And sometimes life. it takes a detour for that to happen. Like it takes, it's like, okay, well, who, you know, our guides are telling us, they're like, okay, well, this path, we really got to shake this up for you. And sometimes it's, it's ugly and it's uncomfortable and you're like, what? But it could totally yeah. take you in a whole other direction that you weren't even thinking. That serves your exactly. soul to a better, <laughs> it just serves you better. It's the growth. It's the growth part. And that's where we talk a lot about being attached to outcome. And we're not saying to not have goals and not to have intention of where you start or vision of where you want to go. Oh, and Mike's going to get some fabulous stories about how he, uh, how he develops or creates and goes through the process of painting. But do, you don't be attached to the outcome, but you can certainly have that vision. But it's like what you said, yeah. what I really want to this huge is about flow. We talk about, Michelle and I have a, a phenomenal song that I'm addicted to. It's called Align. Align this, Align. And um, it's so important to be allied. Aligned because as you're aligned, things flow. There's no detour specifically there, but each energy center you do hit, whether whatever chakra you're hitting, yeah. that could be a detour that you kind of go, oh, I need to, I need to work on this one. Whether it's relationship with self or relationship with others, but as you are aligned, if you become aligned, and as you have that flow, you aren't so attached to the outcome, but rather that process, and you can, as opposed to complaining Absolutely. and being scared or frustrated, yeah, you start to be resilient I love that. and Not see the possibility. Oh, I love that. I think that's so beautiful because what you just said was just so key. I just love that because it's great because I think plans are important because plans keep you active and it's good to be like you want to visualize yeah. and, and planning helps you visualize to see it's just not being crumbled by when that doesn't work out. It's like how actually, you know, yes. great. I didn't think of course I never thought of this story, but I think, okay, my mom did a real story about the Lily. Yay, so Willie Carter! Because right, we need to show up. <laughs> this is just a really great story of not letting things 
fully get destroyed. It's a short story. I'll keep it short, but it's very cute. She was, um, she wanted to move. So she had decided to pack up their entire house before moving because that's what she would do. And like, they didn't even find the house that didn't even exist yet. But the whole point of not letting, she, my mom loves to entertain and she's an amazing, like she's like literally the best baker and entertainer ever. And she was, it was, it was Thanksgiving. Oh my God, it was so cute though. But she made, she was talking to my husband Ben about these potatoes and they were like the most amazing potatoes and they had this like ancestry to them from Seattle or something. Oh, wow. I don't know. There was some crazy story about these potatoes. So we go to have Thanksgiving dinner with the whole family. There was probably 15 to 20 people there. You know, we're surrounded by boxes, having a great time, but my mom's made this really amazing meal. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Like the stove lit on Detour. fire, Detour. the potatoes Detour. did but it was exactly, it was all these detours. And, you know, she could have like been so upset, but instead she's like, whatever, we're having the cold potatoes and the stoves on fire. And it ended up being an really <laughs> amazing Thanksgiving. And I think it's, it's like, it, it's just, yes, she had all these intentions, which you have to have, you have to plan a meal. You have yes. to plan your day. I love yeah, but it I was, love uh, the planning element there. Really I love great. you brought that up. Yeah. And when you have plans, you know what that helps with? That helps with your res resilience. And so we are going to go to break. We're going to have a, a wonderful guest that when we come back, Mike Solomon, and um, a fun little intro to him. Yes, I can't wait because we're so, all everybody's so resilient. Look at our plan. <laughs> <laughs> The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Maggie Chula, on Mondays at noon Eastern for Mastermind with Maggie. Let's work together in a mastermind. We can resolve life's problems and create goals for the future. Build action steps empowering you to create your life in partnership with your divine source of light, your soul. Manifesting your goals can be simple and easy, so come with your problems and leave with a plan. The Akashic Master Teachers and I are waiting to help you. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hello, and we are back. Um, because this is such a special, a very special guest, and Michelle's going to introduce Mike, um, I would like to say, and we've already shared with you, that he is a phenomenal visionary artist. Something that um, I just love about Mike is the way he paints birds. And funny enough about birds is that birds of all beings encounter so many detours and I was reading and I, I came across this really cool thing and it talks about and I just want to I'm going to make sure I read this actually read this word for word here it says in the white stork such a detour could be energetically favorable even if it is up to six times longer than the direct route and I just want to 
say that about birds. Oh. They have to, yeah, because they have to catch a certain wind, and they have to, well, they're flapping. So sometimes ah. if you are on pack and you're really fighting at this and start, oh, I've got to do this and this, and you're putting so much energy out, but if you took the quote-unquote long way around or the detour, even though it's longer in distance, you have to work energetically less. So you get to conserve that energy and allow for other present moment moments. So um, I really love this because as because my paint beautiful birds that are in so you just look at them and go oh my god I, it's real I can touch it and feel it but with, with a bird it's like it's like just just like with us sometimes we might want we end up taking a longer or different non-direct route but in, even though you go but that's like five hours longer than what it was supposed to be you might actually work effortlessly to do it and so I thought that was a great way to bring in the introduction I love that yeah. <laughs> that is Everybody's absolutely like amazing <laughs> okay, so Michelle, no, that's so cool. So that's Mike, an oh, amazing person. Well, Mike Solomon is truly one of the greatest people, and obviously artists that and musician and everything that we. It's, he's a good friend of Lisa and ours. I've known Mike for twenty years, and he is here in Los Angeles right now. And because um, he's from he's our guest. Oh, he's from Vancouver. Yeah, he actually came right. down this weekend for us to work on a new pro- music project that we started 20 years ago, <laughs> for real. Oh, yeah. and, uh, That's a detour. detour. That's a detour. <laughs> hey, Mike. That's a detour. So, Mike Solomon, hello. Hello, guys. Great to be on the show. Yes, Yay. thank you. And, you know, we didn't say you are an artist, but that's, a, you say, that's your thing. Like, you are this incredible painter. What And, like, the paints that you use and the mediums, we're going to get into all that because that's more stuff. But you are currently a painter, artist. Yes, correct. I'm currently being a painter. I, well, you know, as an artist, you kind of, you start off as one. And I started off uh, drawing as a kid, but quickly got a detour when I was 15 into music. And that was basically my main path for for a number of years, you know, did uh, the whole music school thing and and played in bands and, and stuff like that. And that was and my that's path. That's what you say. Yeah, and I was uh, pretty pretty much determined that that was going to be be the path. And then um, basically overnight, something came in to derail that and send me on a totally different direction. But it was so right, and mm-hmm. and it was very strange. How did, and it, and it how did you know? Into, uh, how did you know it was right? Uh, that's something I, I that we will never know. Something came in, and it's almost like it was divine intervention. Um, it was such a strong feeling that it almost just, it was an influx. It just came over me and I said, I've got to get out of this. I'm not learning properly. And, and I was the one that put myself on this path. Like I was, you know, I, I thought mm. I had a lot of control over my life, but I realized I didn't, I realized it was already laid out in front of me and then I got to go down this other road. And just like you said with the birds, it's really funny because I just did a bird, um, uh, a body of work f- uh, with birds in it last year. And it, I didn't even think about it as detours. Basically, I was I took the long way around into mm-hmm. art, into visual arts, and it allowed me to look at music from a totally different perspective, from more of a visual perspective. Which oh wow! Now I can and now and now I've been doing the art for I don't know since about 2000 seriously from the year 2000, and then uh, I've been dabbling in music a little bit and learning properly as for me how to put music together and now I'm incorporating music in the paintings and applying it to music again to put them up together if that makes any sense it does, so I do I want to recap that you you actually started off saying I'm I'm a musician I want to be a musician I'm going to music and something didn't feel right you weren't learning it the way you, you it just didn't feel like it was flowing you weren't aligned with it so then what quote unquote could have been a detour you put yourself on this path of doing art and then you learned something from art about your original uh, goal your exactly. original plan about music and by the exactly. way everybody that is why Mike and Michelle are working together right now they're working on a music project so like oh is Michelle a painter no it's because Mike actually is also a musician <laughs> definitely <and> not <laughs> a painter <laughs> the, the, the thing about a detour is um my detour I could I speak of is it, it feels right all the time I always say like you know you just, all you all you have to do is wake up in the morning and follow the breadcrumbs the clues that you left yourself to uncover Aww. And, and really, and I kind of thought, you know what, if we just do that, 
there's no way we can go wrong because it may seem like a detour, but it's not in the moment. Nothing's a detour in the moment because you're following the path. You're basically walking down a street, staring at your feet and you could be going anywhere. You have no idea. You could end up in the water, like, um, you know, walk off the bridge or whatever like that, but that, that is what you're supposed to do. So I think if we just allow ourselves to trust it and not try to micromanage where we're going, because if you just stick that goal way up there, eventually you're going to get there. It might, and forget about mm-hmm. the how-tos. And mm-hmm. I learned to forget about the how-tos. And being a how visual you... artist is no picnic as far as the roller coaster goes. But I know it will lead me there through massive detours. I may go through a few more, you know. And how do you yourself um, connect to trust? How do, you, how do you connect? How do you go, okay, I feel like I should do this, but and now I need to trust myself and actually follow that breadcrumb. Like, you might see the breadcrumb. How do you, how do you yeah. do yourself personally just go, I'm going to follow it, I'm going to do it? Um, <laughs> because it always works out in the end. Somehow I get saved every month with uh, paying rent and everything, and being an artist is uh, <laughs> totally unpredictable. It's actually, uh, I recommend anybody trying it because, you have to rely on trust so much being an artist because nothing is for sure. And it all depends on how much energy you put into your own creations. And there's a lot of magic to do with it too. And uh, I think I've just okay. I've put myself Mike, in this I career just, to allow trust. What? I think I just figured out how you always make it. Because if you fall the breadcrumbs, you can't be a starving artist. You always have something to eat. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, and I don't use that word starving artist anymore because that's that's another oh, thing that no, keeps you uh, starving, word. right? Yes. Oh, bad word. so glad that you said that. We are yes, yeah. we're making that. No, yeah, sure. mm-hmm. no, I I always love that it. about. I was just going to say, yeah. I've always loved that about Mike. Mike has always had, like, in my darkest moments to call Mike and be like, he's always had a vision. He doesn't have the meltdowns. Like, he's just like, well, this is, you know, this is part of the path. And I'm just like, how do you do that? Because <laughs> I'm like, the sky is falling. <laughs> and today I'm better. No, but he's always had it's that. Because... You know? it's just, he's always had this life vision, and it's amazing. Yeah, you sort of get your hard. vision after a while and uh you kind of just all you can do is basically laugh about and go you know what i've been saved every time i think i'll save myself this time somehow if i just follow the breadcrumbs and sure enough something works out and with your and with your trust and with that con- commitment to moving forward you actually put that it's a it's a very your, your artwork is very interesting because it holds that dreamlike state but such a reality it's it's not even timeless it's worldless uh, your work do you do you find that you oh. how like, Walk us through that process. Walk us through that process of like create a process to being process. Like what you do when you even so, there's two ways that you you've shared with me earlier that you do your your artwork. But share one way with us and how you feel okay. when you're when you're going through that. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways I approach art. Um, a lot of it comes through like if I want to come up with an idea for a painting, I'll I'll just feel this desire that I want to do it, and then. Usually it's through nature or a nature walk, like I'll go down to the beach or be working. I do some gardening on the side. So I'm always around nature, and that's just such a great grounding place to be in. And I'll conceptualize something in my head, and that's kind of where the magic happens, I think. You know, it's through that process. Painting on the canvas is you spend the least amount of time physically applying paint. Like the rest of it's all building the whole thing mm-hmm. and then staring at it for hours and wondering what to do next. And I think that... Uh, and that's a very intuitive process to start with. And then basically you have this grand idea and you have to bring it into the material world. And basically you reduce it to the level where you can actually put paint on and your idea is nothing like you thought of. So then the process of revealing it um, comes through a series of accidents. And eventually you learn from that painting. Like I'll be looking at a painting and it basically tells me what to do until it's finished. So the painting. Like it's almost as though painting. you're, yeah, you're revealing your painting. You're you're experiencing your painting that's already been finished through your act of applying paint, and that's mm-hmm. one way I approach a piece. So, and then when it's finished, I kind of have to sit there and really realize, like, figure out what I just did and learn from it. And um, and that's the part where you you get so attached to a painting that you kind of don't want to let it go for a while unless until you sort of experienced what it means to you. Well, and just before we go into that part, because that I find is fascinating, 
I want to really emphasize that part you just said about you've, you've done so much connecting with it and creating it and visualizing it in your mind. Like it's already happened in your mind. This is what Michelle was saying earlier about plans and that visualization before the reveal. The reveal is like, there it is. But yeah. like mm-hmm. you, Michelle goes through this with when she does bright music. Like you hear it in your head. Like a lot of times, Michelle, you shared with me that you've thought about it. I, like, oh, I hear it in my head. It's already there. Like, yeah, I always hear it in my head. And <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this, it's, what's been so cool so about us connecting again musically, because like I said, this is, we met doing music. Like I met him right out of music school and we started this project. This is crazy. Yesterday, speaking of crazy detours, he starts playing this like riff that he's been playing. And then I just start singing this melody. That's the same melody, same song that was written in Kamloops in a field in 2000. I mean, sorry, in oh. 1996 or seven. And we're just like, oh my they, they, like, that's a pretty big, like we could not have planned this and time and all that stuff, but just that whole, um, like, and just how we write together because we have so much history and we're so, like, it was just so, it, and I think a lot of that sometimes in the bigger picture is sort of the planning and then the execution is quite easy. Like it's been a very, we've written some really wonderful music this weekend and recorded it, really excited to share it, but it was relatively easy. But I think it's because of the 20 years that kind of brought it yeah. together. You know, I, I do, I do think that's part of it because we both conceptualized this idea of how we wanted to do it because both of us have not necessarily done music how we thought we wanted to do it. And now there was, and I think all the time was in the planning and the execution was quite, quite easy, really. We've only been here for well, two I days. I love that. <laughs> and you know what's really cool is that we are going to go to commercial, but I, I, I think we should close off and then come back to what happens after the reveal because there is that conceptualization. Oop, is that a word? I don't know. But when you're conceiving, yep. conceiving <laughs> the concept of it, um, that takes so much of your, that's in you, that's your, you're the creator. Then you actually get to reveal it, which is quite easy, as you said, the execution of it, and then the reveal. But then, then when we come back, Mike's going to tell us another really cool part about after the reveal. And it's really, I think a lot of people could spend more time on the after the reveal. So we'll keep you suspense until then. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Every Tuesday on Living with Moxie, join Shafali Burns and Donna Martuz in conversations designed to take you to the next level, where we highlight ideas, resources, and strategies that provide you with the leverage you require to meet and exceed your business and personal goals. Each week on Living with Moxie, we will lead conversations related to success, achievement, fulfillment, and extraordinary, vibrant living. Are you ready to live with Moxie? Join us. I'm Alec Baldwin with People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. I grew up loving circuses and other traveling animal shows, but it never occurred to me what life might be like for the animals. Training wild animals to do things they don't understand takes force. Routine discipline with a hook or whip with the heel of a boot shows the animal exactly who's the boss. Don't patronize animal acts. Please contact People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. 757-622-PETA All right, I bet everybody's on the edge of their seats going, okay, great, what? After the reveal, what? <laughs> but oh. actually, um, yeah, so Mike, tell us, okay, so you have spent, how much time would you spend, now I know it's probably different for everything, how much time would you spend, yeah. like you do oil paintings, and this requires layers upon layers upon layers and stuff. Once you, and if you can talk more about that, that'd be great too, but once you finish yep. it and the reveal has been made, then what? So, okay, yay, go. <laughs> okay. So a little bit about um, oil painting is this. You said it it does take a lot of layers. And uh, I was just thinking when you were talking about the detours about how every painting and every song that you come up with basically is is already there. It's already been laid out for you. 
as a vision, and then you basically have to physically put it together. So you're putting together something that's already been done. And especially in a painting, I'll be, I'll have an idea, I'll execute the first draft, I'll put a bunch of layers on, then something won't work usually. And I'll have to paint over a completely different part of it or remove something or paint over the whole thing, leaving little bits of, like showing. By the end of it, wait, oh, I'm interrupting so you. Many when that happens, okay. Well, yeah, when yeah. that happens, do you are you that resilient and flexible that you go, oh, okay, got to do it, or do you do you ever oh, yeah. have a little yeah, bit of a temper be. tantrum, or do you like, oh, uh, oh my yeah. god, or you? <laughs> I used to. I used to. I used to. You gotta have a lot of balls to cover up a painting you've been working on for sixty hours. Yeah. You know, and or take sandpaper to it, and it's like that. That really works. Sort of, but if I did this, that would be amazing. And you have to sacrifice what you have spent so long, and that's part of the detour <gasps> itself. So my painting, I was just thinking, each painting I do, it's almost a metaphor for your life. You can think of your life as a song or a painting, and mm-hmm. you have to make bold, broad strokes and bold ones sometimes <gasps> to go around it mm-hmm. and learn about the whole, every inch of that canvas so it all makes sense for that song. You have to reveal the song because our life is basically a giant frequency which is visual and sound so essentially we're making our own piece of art just by living and i think mm. it's, it's just a neat way to look look at a painting that way once i understand that then i'm totally comfortable with putting on the shelf for a while or painting over it or just abandoning it for sometimes i'll leave paintings for years bring them back paint something else with it and it turns into the magic it should have been you know not and they basically yeah. tell you what to do. They they're they're alive in their cells. So um Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, you that's listen. a connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so once you actually oh my I love the word that you said sacrifice. It's like, oh my god, you're just sacrifice oh. even don't you do it. Now it's you have the reveal, but then you did something very special. I wasn't expecting to hear about it. I mean Michelle probably knows that you do this. In fact, I believe that Michelle has quite a few of your paintings on her walls and around. Yeah. <laughs> actually Michelle, how do you have? They, they're living. Uh, how how many? Have... Yeah. And it's just so funny. I, I was just thinking, I'll take pictures and text them to all the viewers. Why would I think that? But anyway, yes, <laughs> a lot. Um, I have, I'm looking at one right now, actually, because Mike calls me and all, has always called me Ukubon. And in the studio, there's this like really magical, like it, it's this magical, like kind of fairy, fairy being. And she's like Ooh, looking but... up to, you don't even know. It's just it's exactly worldless, and it's so beautiful, but he says that that one's called Ukulon, and it was funny when he walked into, when he just got here the other day, and he walked in, and he saw all his old art, because it's funny, because he's moved on, you know how we all do as artists, and he's like, oh, because some of these pieces are literally from 20 years ago, and they're amazing, oh gosh, yeah. like, they're all amazing, like, and to me, I'm just like, this is an incredible amazing piece of art and then he'll be like oh that's so weird I remember doing and like how it evolves and that's what's so cool too and uh just and, and also in fact serving about... you yeah like, he was, I mean, like each painting it's... means so much to you and he was able to do that painting serve you and it helps you through whatever detours and things because you go to those paintings to get energy from and just appreciation and, oh and yeah to, I mean move through it Art is so important. It's just, it's art in all forms, just like what Mike said, that we are a living, we are a living piece of art. And just how you said, like, I literally live in a song. I think I live in a musical. I fully do. It never Aww. stops. <laughs> but, you guys but, like, both live in musicals. Yeah, totally. It's like, <laughs> birds are dressing Lisa, and I'm, like, singing all the time. But um, when uh, a big, big detour happened in this process of uh, Mike and I working on these songs, so the yesterday or no one day Saturday Saturday we had been working on this song from noon and it was now 9:30 and at night and we had come up with these lyrics it was really wonderful I'm really excited for us to share this song um, it's actually called it's how does one break free and it's this just incredible song mm. but the whole point so it's 9:30 go to turn it on this has never happened Pro Tools <gasps> shuts down any races. The whole song erases oh my everything. <laughs> it was just like I didn't even know what to do, and I did. I I did not handle the detour that gracefully at that moment. I was just like, what? And then I was like, ah, oh, what's the point? And all this stuff. But then, and then Mike suggested we take a break, and came back. Good Mike. And for for yeah. real, twenty minutes later, we recorded. 
I think it's one of the best songs in my whole <gasps> career. Best songs. Oh! And then we stayed we 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 stayed up till like one in the morning re recording it. The second time, kinda like the bird detour that you were talking about, it was it took yeah. nine hours to get to that first place. It all got erased. Then the second time, it was just like, boom, boom, boom. It was so fast. Like, Mike went outside for a minute. I would have the headphones on. He could hear it through the window somehow. Not, couldn't hear the song, but he just had this melody. He runs back inside. He's like, you have to sing this right here. And then I sang it. And then we're like, what? And the whole thing happened like that. And so taking that detour, oh, we needed a second verse, too. The first verse took, no joke, four hours to write. The second verse took five minutes yeah. to write. And yeah. it was just like, you have a path. it needed, I don't know why that happened, but for whatever reason, it's exactly what needed to happen. And it gave this beautiful, clean slate. And the second time was so much easier than the first time. But it did take and a break. I mean, show. I did freak out. I'm not going to. Yeah. You have to have an energy. The great thing about. And... Yeah. The great thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, the great thing about uh, those when those things happen, too, is, like, you get derailed at, a, at say, like, 930. You're tired. You're hot. You've been mm-hmm. in this apartment for too long. It is very – it's a very easy time to go, you know what? We should shove it. Maybe it's meant to just – let's just stop, you know? But then you go, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, that might be a test. When things get really hard and then it's, it, it, the rug gets pulled up from under you in painting, it's this way. Just when I think there's no hope, I just go, you know what? If I can work through this, because it's worth it. And there's a little glimmer of hope in there that'll mm-hmm. tell you it's worth it. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just a bad idea that you're beaten down too much. But <laughs> when your heart is connected, no, I'm talking about paintings and stuff. Mm-hmm. But when yeah. uh, sometimes if there's a little glimmer and it, it all shuts down and I think I don't think I can do it, if I work through it, then it's just like that. It takes maybe a couple brush strokes and all of a sudden it's back. And you're like, wow, if I, mm. I could have abandoned it because it told me it might, might go away or derail. Um, it's a test. It's a test about how serious you want it sometimes. You just got to work oh. a little harder sometimes, you know, that, you know? cause we I, definitely could have stopped. So true. We could have. And the funny thing is, is that what happened was because I, Anyone that knows me knows this person when I had it because I had my attitude for that minute. And then I was like, fine, I'll just sing this. We were testing if it would save. And so I sing this one little line and then I sat there with the headphones and I go to Mike, I go, it's, it, it's kind of brilliant. And then we went back. And it was just so funny because I didn't want it to be good. I was like, hey, it's all going to suck. And then I look at him and I'm like, it's, it's kind of perfect. And then that like brought and there was so much excitement and enthusiasm, but it was, he's so right. It was like a thousand degrees. It was just all those, a recipe for just being like, let's just end. But I agree well, with I Mike, love, what he said. Sometimes it's a test of how much do you really want this? I love that. Yeah, and your life is, just your life does share that, that all the time. And you know what? The fact that you guys, you actually, Mike, you just said the word hope twice. You haven't said the whole show. And then right now in the same paragraph oh, wow. there, you said the word, you said no hope or no glimmer of hope. And you know what? I just realized mm-hmm. I'm, I'm staring at the word resilience. And I kept thinking, well, how does one Whoa. become resilient? What is resilience? And you know what resilience is? Mm-hmm. Is that you do have hope, that there's still a glimmer of hope. And you know what? Even yeah. though we can be ego, e- egotistically, like ego, our ego's attached to, no, it's not going to be good now because we lost the best of it. Mm-hmm. It's that you have a slight, you do your heart hopes for and you and you had support with Mike and Mike was like committed and even though it's like oh like I said a thousand degrees there was a commitment to resilience there, and yeah. resilience means hope I love so that. always that's, everybody that's have hope a good word resilience I'm gonna write that and down resilience. So I it every day because that's that's that should be an artist in, in an artist handbook the word resilience because yeah you've got to stick to that belief and share with the listeners right now that Mike actually does intuitive writing. So words to him not only really say something, they, they hold up vibration. That's why Michelle and I do what we do with our words and our songs. But there's a vibration to words. And Mike's actually picking up on that word right now, resilience. And Mike is most mm-hmm. in, like, insane. Like you just, it's not even a, a written language word. It's your intuitive writing that you use with calligraphy pens. But before, because I do want to get so off track that please, 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 after the reveal, I have to go back because this is so important and okay. so interesting yeah. to me. Once we reveal anything that we do, whether we build, we buy a house and we decorate it, whether we have a, whether we get a job or we, or we finish completed a project, or there's, we get married, so now we're married. That's the final part. What is it that you do with something that the painting once you've painted it and the reveal and before you you sell you sell it and it goes to another home? Well, that's the hard part is selling it. 
Oh, um, <laughs> oh sorry. And, and that, you said that. <laughs> it, it's hard to sell it, and then it's uh, sometimes it's 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 beautiful to sell it. It, it all depends on um, after I've learned from it and spent some time with it is when someone else can can put that painting on their wall and and uh, and it, and get something out of it. And it's it's really amazing when they can get something out of it that I kind of had a vision of myself, that means it came across. And that's, it makes you want to cry sometimes when people express, when people love something so much and they get kind of the essence of it. Uh, I just felt oh, like I, I'm, yeah. I've done my job and I'm, I'm a servant. You know, we're all servants to humanity in our craft. It's our yeah. duty to sure. recycle this energy so everybody can learn from it. And, and then, and that is what keeps me going as far as the painting goes is, is that cycle. If I was to do it for myself without anybody in mind, I, I don't think I would because I would, I would be a hoarder and then I'd probably abuse that <laughs> energy and I wouldn't, and, and it would, and it would become stale. You know, it's gotta be right. like recycled right. and, and it's all about sharing. Yeah. The exchange, the flow. And I love that you said there's mm. a cycle and the, and that people can catch with the essence. So when, when you bring a painting back into your, your life, like your everyday living, like you're there with it, you're passing by, it, you're looking at, you're talking to it, but not just like in words, but you're feeling the painting. The painting is teaching you. Mm-hmm. In fact, you, you were said before. Um, it is. So yeah. What are some things? What's it, the most, um, what's the painting that you've, that you can, I mean, they're all very special. Yeah, they're very all special the paintings you have, but is there one particular that has spoken the most to you, that taught you most, that you felt was a teacher? Did you decide to keep it, or did you sell it? Oh, God. I, I think I've kept, I've kept some pretty precious ones. Um, you actually have one in your house of mine that is uh, very, very special. It's called Listen, and it goes with everything. It's, it's basically of, a, of a, yeah. woman, a profile of a woman with her hands over her ears, but listening to her. But it's not a woman. It's a non-woman. It's non-woman. an androgynous being. Yeah. It's it's just mm-hmm. it's a figure that's listening to all the frequencies that we can't see, and it's, it's penetrating everything. Basically, it's taking in all life. And, uh, and did you sit with that? Pretty much sums we can up. share when we when we come back. I want you to just finish off that one. But when we come back after commercial, I want okay. you to finish sharing about that one because what you just said okay, about the frequencies very important and that has all the intuitive script connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world ohm times radio iom fm have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm the secret key is finding a love partnership not just a regular connection how do you find these through conscious relationships ascending hearts dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Older buildings may contain asbestos and lead, pipe or other insulation, ceiling tiles, exterior siding, roof shingles, and sprayed-on soundproofing may contain asbestos. Disturbing materials containing lead-based paint may release lead dust into the air. If your home contains asbestos or lead-based paint and any of these materials have been damaged or will be disturbed during cleanup, talk to public health authorities from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. All right. I know we kind of ran close into the commercial there because I got so excited about between intuitive writing, or you call it intuitive scripts. I want to apologize because it is intuitive script as opposed to writing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you mentioned just something about the frequencies there because I guess that's when you're after the reveal and you're connecting with it, you're in fact actually, would you say you're sharing? Like you're jumping on the same frequency as what you've, yeah. I need to know more about that. Okay, so um, I listen to a lot of music um, when I paint, and I've always been very visual with music. So I've I developed this sort of freehand, uh, and it's not really a language like you said. It's it's more of I'll take something and I'll try to not try. I will write down in in shapes the essence of 
what that word or sound is on paper. So it's it's the essence mm. of stuff, you know. And I started doing it with, um, okay, like on your painting, there's basically layers and layers and layers um, of these scripty type of lines, and they're all kind of different. And they explain all the different frequency bands and levels of perception of our reality, dimensions, if you will, and sounds and air. And they oh. all have a different essence to it. And I, I, I love capturing which, what shapes, um, like it, like a vowel sound. There's certain words that you hear um, with maybe a lot of consonants, and they almost take a shape in your mind instead. Like you don't look at the word in your mind's eye. You might see a shape of it, like the frequency band of, say, um, kitten, you know, and it's spiky and it's, it's kind of unpredictable. And, or the word like love, it's very like, like it's big and sort of soft, you know, so everything kind of has a shape. And so when someone will say a word or um, tell a story, maybe I'll look at that whole story or essence and I'll do a line of writing and shapes and, and lines and curvy lines that makes sense to me when I look at that word, I go, okay, that sounds like how that smells or, or that looks like how that smells or say, so, and it's something that I can't really repeat the same every time either right. because it's very Unique. gestural. It's very gestural and in, in, improvised in the moment. So I love doing it. I want to explore it more. And I love that you picked up on that because yeah, that's, that, You've got that thing well, in your house I, I and love, you can uh, kind of figure out what, what it means by each line. I love words and the frequency of words. And in fact, actually, Michelle, when she writes her lyrics and she just comes up with them, it, that's what makes me fall in love with. The, it's the vibration of frequency of the lyrics that she writes and, and creates and stuff. And I think, actually, do you, you have some lyrics that would be, be quite fitting here, right, Michelle? Oh, yes. The lyrics hey. that... Mike and I spent four hours writing in the heat. <laughs> They're really kind of awesome. Um, yeah. The heat. So, uh, yeah, sure. It was very hot that day. Yeah, so uh, we decided to write, because um, Mike had this idea for a song, and then we decided lyrically to kind of make it sort of about coming up, because he, he had this lyric, how does one break free? Which is, like, that's a really wonderful question. And that is, that kind of break free is kind of coming out of the breakdown, you know, rising from the ashes, mm. like that is, you kind of oh, break bird. free, you have to be, yeah, exactly, there's so many birds here, you have to be kind of trapped to break free, otherwise, what are you breaking free from, but, um, so we kind of wrote it about the breakdown, too, so, uh, it's kind of funny reading lyrics, I always think, because in my mind, they're singing, you sing but, them? um, you can sing I'm already are. singing them, so it'll be hard to read them, but it says, so would you like to what sing you them, think or do you want to read them? I'll no, I'll read them. That will make more sense. Okay. okay, what you think is supposed to be is what you're letting go. All your fears, they lie to you. Whispers taking hold. This is my favorite line. Elevate a consequence. Radiate the fall you meant. Perception divided you. Everything is falling through. And then it changes. It, it changes to the next one. But what Mike and I both freaked out about was elevate a consequence. Radiate the fall you meant. Because consequences are normally like, you know, there's consequences to your actions. It seems very negative. And it's like, okay, well, like how Lisa informed me that elevating a dish is taking like a really, you make it fancier. So it's like taking elevate um, is take a consequence and switch it around and then radiate that fall you meant that you, you fell and, you know, own it, own all this, and then you can transform it. So it's taking something that's seemingly negative like a detour, like a fall, like, and there can be so many great things that come out of these disasters. I think so, so many people can relate to that on every level from illness. Someone's become ill mm -hmm. and now they have to retrain their body and now they become the best personal trainer or coach or oh, physical body care. That they for that. Yes. And, and no, it could I, be I, anything. I don't we don't, Exactly. No, Michelle's gone through, I know, various, a lot of illnesses, uh, physical and, and health-wise and stuff like that. Like, yours came from, you're very spiritually in tuned, energetically in tuned, um, just a, a, an interesting look at life and detours themselves and have that. And for someone else to, like right, like right now, somebody's listening, and they're thinking 
no, my detour is not fun. It's not welcomed. It's totally unexpected, and I can't yeah. deal with it. And I just wonder, one more time, Michelle, sorry, can you repeat that verse? Because that might be able to help that one person who's thinking that right now. Can you just read that verse again? Mm. Okay. The what? whole thing? Okay. okay. What you think it's supposed to be is what you're letting go. All your fears, they lie to you. Whispers taking hold. Elevate a consequence. Radiate the fall you meant. Perception is dividing you. Everything is falling through. Perception then, is the fall through. Oh, sorry. Perception ah. is dividing. Well, perception is dividing you because we are all our perception. You see life one way. I see life one way. Mike sees life one way. Oh, and we could look oh, at the same. Yeah, because the perception, a situation is only how we perceive it. It's not really, because there is no, it's not really so black that and white. That this is what it is. It's like, yeah. like actually, when you even think of color, um, one of my family members, he's colorblind. So if I say this is purple, it's not purple to him. And it doesn't mean, it's just not. And so right. everything is our perception, how we perceive the yeah. situation. I watched an amazing and documentary the other day. Divi- yeah. It does I think divide us, really but it divides, and it on divides because... ourselves, too. It takes you yes, away from uh, thought, you... which everything is. Yes. Is, Everything is allowed. Like everything, every perception is source. So it is dividing us because we get caught in what we think. We get caught in outcomes of how we think things should be. But, you know, I think yes. when you take that away, we're actually living through love and we're living pure and we have a direct connection. And I think this division, these little sidetracks, um, we have to be, we have to let go of that. Flexible. Yeah, yeah what was that all about in, the, in the lyric? What was that first line in that lyric, too? You said, um, What you think it's supposed to be is what you're letting go. Right. It's what you're letting go. Because yeah, I mean, I, I that understand. separation or division, it, that's what happens is that when we – see, to be separate is, is, on, is a lie. That's a whisper. That's the whisper of untruth. Yeah. That is a lie. And Absolutely. It, I love what you said about source because what Michelle is thinking in her life and what Mike's thinking and what I'm thinking, what these listeners are thinking and what own times radio is thinking, well, you know, the energy <laughs> of it is thinking <laughs> – is all connected to that source, but then we have this idea that, that we all have a different perception, and if we can all come together and be resilient each time we think, oh, okay, it was, oh, I see this way, you see it that way, oh my gosh, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's being, yeah, it's and being it, open to other perspectives too, and also knowing that for the listeners that are listening and going through a detour, Detours aren't fun. It's the same that birth doesn't feel good. People, any mother will tell you that. That's not an awesome thing to go through. But you get an amazing reward. It's painful and terrible and awful and really quite... But it's but then you have this baby and all of a sudden you forget the pain that it, and it was very yeah. painful. I'm sure I haven't had kids, but people tell me. And, and also, it, it, and also honoring other people's paths, like you said, like illness. The illness is a big one and. When someone's really ill, they don't want to hear you say, oh, it's just a detour. Like, the last, that's the mm-hmm. last thing you yeah. hear. It's having mm-hmm. compassion, giving people compassion for their detours and not telling them yes. that it's a detour. <gasps> so you know Back what? Out of it. You are, you know, I'm sending you love. Like, you, you are on a very tough path. I, you know, I bow down to you. That's amazing you're going through this illness and you will come out the other side. And don't say that you'll see it from a different perspective and things. It's just that having that compassion for everybody's plan because – we're just we're just perpetuating the division if we if we have an yeah. ego about somebody else and say oh they're just obviously not being spiritual enough because he's got cancer well maybe not you know or that person that's very dark <laughs> maybe through that dark that time he'll become yeah. your greatest teacher and so I think if we can erase that judgment and perception of the duality so much then I think yeah. we can we can just appreciate okay. the path we're on a little more. When you said the word compassion, I almost freaked out because just before the show, I kept thinking of the word I was like, why is the word compassion coming up so much with this theme of detour? And I just wrote wow. what I said, it's compassion for the other's detour. It's, it's yeah. compassion for, because the biggest thing I thought about was invest in the detour. That's, that's what I want my takeaway that I love every time. Oh. Invest in that detour. Invest that's a resource detour, yeah. you have. It, it's, it's, it's an exchange. It's an, an energetic it. emotion. And- yeah. And don't just but don't just push it under the rug. Like I like and I'm admitting this because it, it happened like two days ago. I could have used, oh, this is okay, it's all gonna work out when my computer crashed. Yeah, I was there twenty minutes, but at the time I was like, I'm cursed. And I really did say that. I mean it's embarrassing. But Mike was so <laughs> good with me because he didn't he didn't be like, eh, you're an idiot, snap out of it. He was just like, 
he's like, yeah, this sucks. He goes, you need a break. Let's walk away. And it, but it was just because it's those moments, like you still have to honor the moment you're in. And if you're feeling pain, if you really feel that it will dissipate faster than just being like, and that's having compassion for yourself too. You have to have compassion. I totally agree. I love that. And I was, just because we are going to wrap up, and I wanted to say, first of all, Michelle, I think you actually real, felt safe because Mike was there to be able to say, I'm cursed. But and in order, I would love to have everybody <laughs> feel safe. And Mike has this really cool gift that um, Michelle and I want to extend to all of the listeners. If you can check out how his intuitive script even looks, there really is a frequency that he captures. He, he is the connected to source when he does this. We are inviting all... We're inviting all the listeners to email us at 432shift.com to give us that one word. Maybe it's hope. Maybe it's resilience. Maybe it's whatever it is. But email us that one word that you would love to see Mike um, intuitively put out and, and write out in in intuitive script. And not only will we send you the digital copies that you have it immediately, he is offered to personally do it and then mail it out to you, the hard copy, so that you have it in your hands, but like you're holding that frequency that somebody else cares. If you're feeling hopeless right now, like you've lost hope and you need to have some help through your detour, Mike has generously offered to do this because he, that's his mission, I think, on this planet, that he just wants to connect with people and help them along the way, and he's a great.